Hey everyone, I'm Jensen. It is Wednesday, September 23rd, and from a mask protest in Michigan to more headway being made on a COVID-19 vaccine, I'm here to give you all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But before we do any of that, I want to get you caught up on the latest coronavirus data from the state. So today, there were 903 new cases reported compared to the 21-day average of 999. 52 deaths were reported compared to the average of 24. 78 new hospitalizations compared to 67. And 8 ICU admissions compared to the 21-day average of 11. Now, we did just see a big jump in reported deaths, but I do want to make clear that deaths reported today do not equal deaths that happen today. Coroners have up to six months to certify a death certificate, and while it usually doesn't take quite that long, it can cause a delay between the time when the death actually happened to when it is reported. So keep that in mind when we report these numbers each day. And with fall finally here, experts are already looking ahead toward winter, saying that there could be a surge in cases once that cold weather hits. According to Governor Mike DeWine, the concern is as people move inside more often and are in more confined spaces, we may see more spread. So the goal is to get the positivity rate as low as possible, and Ohio is already headed in the right direction. Yesterday, DeWine said that the number had dropped to 2.9%. So experts have repeatedly said that the best place to be when it comes to the coronavirus is outside because particles disperse quickly in open air. But what options do we have when temperatures start dropping into the single digits? Well, Dr. Mark Weir, an environmental engineer with OSU, says the key is maximizing airflow and filtration in homes and businesses, which is something that's already being talked about a lot in our hospitals. So the idea is to bring in as much fresh air from outside as possible while removing air from indoors. One key point to understand, though, Weir said, is that air conditioning and heating are not the same as ventilation. Ventilation is just focused on moving the air around. So while you may have an AC system, that doesn't mean that you have a ventilation system. To learn more about indoor ventilation, we suggest checking out the EPA website. But I do want to make clear that the core principles of preventing the spread of COVID-19 have remained the same. Wear a mask when you're inside with people that aren't in your immediate family. Be aware of your symptoms. Don't go to somebody else's house if you feel sick. Clean your hands, of course, and distance physically while staying connected socially. Experts say it's probably smart to plan on having smaller gatherings this holiday season, especially with the looming threat of the flu since we know that hits its peak in the cold winter months as well. But we are getting closer and closer to a COVID-19 vaccine. Johnson & Johnson is beginning a huge final study to try and prove if a single dose COVID-19 vaccine can protect against the virus. The study, which started today, will be one of the world's largest coronavirus vaccine studies so far, testing the shot in 60,000 volunteers in the U.S., South Africa, Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, and Peru. A handful of other vaccines in the U.S., including shots made by Moderna and Pfizer, and others in other countries are already in final stage testing. Hopes are high that answers about at least one candidate being tested in the U.S. could come by year's end or even sooner. So we'll keep you updated on that. And today in Michigan, parents, athletes, and coaches rallied at the state capitol in Lansing. They opposed Governor Gretchen Whitmer's executive orders requiring athletes to wear a mask while playing sports. The Facebook event for the rally claims the orders place young athletes in a dangerous situation. A number of speakers went out to the event, including Senator Lana Tice, who wrote an open letter to the governor titled Unmask Our Children. She said she was concerned to see many students forego playing sports this year due to that mask mandate. One of the group's largest arguments is the World Health Organization does not recommend wearing a mask for children playing sports, which is true, but it does encourage all other critical public health measures like maintaining at least a meter of distance from others, limiting the number of children playing together, providing access to hand hygiene facilities, and encouraging their use. The CDC does recommend mask use by athletes, but also acknowledges that people participating in high-intensity sports may not be able to do that, suggesting instead to consider finding a location for greater ventilation, saying outdoors is best. But let's shift focus here to Kentucky. The Jefferson County Grand Jury has recommended three counts of first-degree wanton endangerment for former Louisville police officer Brett 
Hankison for firing shots that went into a nearby apartment the night of Breonna Taylor's death. No other officers involved were indicted. Attorney General Daniel Cameron's office said it did not investigate Kenneth Walker or Breonna Taylor claims of civil negligence by the officers or the narcotics case against Jamarcus Glove or the search warrant obtained for Taylor's apartment. He said his office will vigorously prosecute the charges against Higgison. He also announced he will create a task force to do a top to bottom review of the search warrant process. Taylor was shot and killed in her home on March 13th when Louisville Metro police officers served a no-knock warrant related to a narcotics investigation. Cameron said there was no body cam footage from that night, saying his office pieced together the investigation through the ballistics report and interviews. The three officers identified in the investigation were Brett Hankison, Sergeant Jonathan Mattingly, and Detective Miles Cosgrove, all were placed on administrative reassignment following the shooting. Hankison has since been fired for his actions the night of Taylor's death, but Mattingly and Cosgrove remain on administrative reassignment. And locally, a demonstration at Monroe and Talmadge kicked off at 3 p.m. today in honor of Brianna and calling for justice. And with crowds of admirers lined up outside, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg was remembered at the court today by friends, family, and colleagues as a prophet for justice who persevered against all the odds and became a key figure in American government. The court's eight justices gathered for the first time in more than six months for the ceremony to mark Ginsburg's death from cancer last week at age 87 after 27 years on the court. Her casket will be on public view until 10 o'clock tonight and then again tomorrow from 9 a.m. until 10 p.m. But before I go, let's end things on a positive note. Check out this eight-year-old entrepreneur. Tyler is the proud owner of Tyler's Snack Shack, and the best part is 50% of his profits go right to the Humane Society of Monroe. Tyler wanted to find a way to give back to something he really cared about. And then his dad, Joshua, helped him build his shack. Apparently, the project only took a few hours. And if you want to check it out for yourself and help some animals of Monroe, Tyler's Snack Shack is open Monday through Friday from 3 to 8 p.m. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and hit subscribe. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.